But this is the point I'm trying to make, is that music culture, if it was subsidised, maybe there would be a, a sort of a, a seedbed, a safety net for people to make hundreds of different diverse kinds of musics without feeling that it would be out of fashion, that it wouldn't be marketable at a particular time. Dum, 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 dum. How would you like to be nationalised, Arthur? Well, that's what the... Mm. I already am. <laughs> but do you know what I'm saying? Yes, but I don't think, I don't think that's feasible <laughs> within the context of, of an industry and people who have to well, make Well, that's profit, what I'm saying. One has to attack... Right? That, that one has to take a political stance against that and one has to say that this is a capitalist industry that must be made less voraciously which, capitalist which, which to support rockets, a wider range of music. Pat, which rock acts actually you do feel is, 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 fall into the same category he's talking about with jazz where it simply doesn't matter? I mean, some of the older, long, long the ones who've come through from, from the 60s who are established really as musicians above all, there are, there are quite a few people in what we're talking about, the pop rock industry, the across the board industry, who in fact don't have to suffer what you're talking about. They're already there, and they can be as free as, as the jazz musicians that um, Imran's talking about. But, but I think, I mean, I, mean, I always I always relate my career to, to Stevie Wonder. Stevie Wonder was little Stevie Wonder. Yeah, you know, yeah indeed I that, remember. Yeah. You know, a patronising appellation for the start. Little Stevie Wonder had to do a lot of crap. He had to do a lot of songs that were decided for him by the record company. As soon as Stevie Wonder started to sell records. Stevie Wonder went to Berry God and says, right, this is the contract. I produce the records, I bring them out, I decide the budgets, da, 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 da. These are the artists who have suddenly realised that commercial power equals, should equal artistic control. And these people are, these people are very lucky. For the, I mean, to take a quintessentially white pop act is the Pet Shop Boys. The Pet Shop Boys got hits very early, made EMI a lot of money very early and could say, listen, we're making you a fortune. For that fortune we're making you, we want artistic control over sleeves, over releases, over playing live. We don't want to play live. We do not want to play live. We don't want to go that route. We want to make videos. I mean, these, th this is this is like the, the, the thing about the pop business which always um, makes me do all the compromising things because I think if I do all the compromising things and get a big hit and then get another big hit and then get another big hit, I will have so much artistic control. I'll be saying, no, listen, I'm making you you know, quarter of your gross product a year, I'm going to do what the hell I want. I'm going to record a, an album here, I'm going to take four years to do it, I'm going to record it in any country. Arthur, was, do, I'm do going to put any images on the cover that I want to do. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's but the there paradox. Are other people, so there are, people have, the there are some people who've done it from the beginning. And, it, I mean, isn't it, it's a bit like saving up, isn't it, one day to retire, isn't it? Isn't it better to start off and go right through as you, well, as you feel? But, but you, let, you, let, you let might not Arthur. even get the start. No, you might not. And that's the point, and that's the compromise you make to get into the system. But can you, you have can to make get out of the compromises. Have you got out of the compromise? That's why I'm such a screw up. Did now? I get out of the compromise? I never was in the compromise <laughs> to begin with. <laughs> and they can call that a very difficult position to be in, as far as I'm concerned, because as the, he's saying, if you're. Patrick, I think. Uh, Patrick. Uh, yes, dear Patrick Dunning. Um, if you're not in a category, for instance, you're not a jazz singer, a blues singer, which I'm not, I don't have a category. Mm. They, just say she's international and therefore they don't know how to package you and if they don't know how to package you to right. sell you to a particular area of the market don't make money you can you don't that's right you don't make <laughs> that kind of money that we're talking about 75 million dollars a year or something like that but i'm very happy in the position that i'm in because i've sustained i'm still here whereby a lot of those who have gone with the trend and have compromised maybe are not still here and those of us who haven't compromised, like the Frank Sinatras, like the Ella Fitzgeralds, mm -hmm. like Frank Johnny Sinatra Mathis, he never compromised, although Johnny Mathis is also complaining about the fact that his recording company, whatever it is, puts him through the mill because he has to sing songs that he says he hates. Did they ever try with you to put you through the mill, to make you compromise, to, to package you in ways that you didn't want? I don't think they bothered to try because they knew I wouldn't go along with it. But at the same time, on my side, I did feel, well, maybe I should do something to get a hit record. But if everybody knew how to make a hit record, we'd all have a hit record. So therefore, the only thing to do is to stick to your own guns and do what you know you're comfortable with, rather than prostituting yourself down the line. You can make a lot of money, maybe, as one-shot deal, or maybe it's second time. But if you're happy with it, then uh, case that's something else again. If you're not happy with it, it traumas my my in insights, and I don't know how to do that, really. The single you've done with Bronsky Beat, yeah. was that your idea? No, it was Paul Savory's idea, who came to me with the song, and I happen to like the song, and I like the words, and it's a lot of fun. And it so happens that the songs that I have done, that obviously are geared for a particular section of the public, have worked for me. 
but it was because I happened to like the songs and the music after they get through gooking it up and gooking it down and all of this commercial business. And, oh, wow, oh, wow, if I do it. <laughs> no. <laughs> No, wait a minute. That's, that's, that's an ethical trademark, isn't it? I know, but at the same time... Do, do you do that for yourself, or do you do that because people expect that of you? Oh, I've been doing it all my life, as far as I can remember, but then somebody decided it was a very commercial thing to did do. You decide, did, you say that, did you decide it was a commercial thing? No, I didn't. The people who were with the record well, that, well, And it was fine, up to a point. But then when they started putting on every record, this wow, I only <laughs> did this wow for one record. And every time I make a record, every time I turn around, I get the record. I go into the studio, I make the record as an innocent little song, and I do the song <laughs> as a kid way. But when I get the record back, it's just wow, wow. <laughs> did they, what, tell, me, tell me exactly what you did. they actually take that noise and drop it in? And they drop it in here, That's they outrageous. drop it in there, they never stop that, dropping and, and it. Did, did, they, did, they not, did they not console you about that? No. That's outrageous. No, that they've do done you it. I think that, they, that that is sort of packaging you as what the stereotype of Ethical. a black artist yes, is. Yes, it's not, no, it's not a black artist. artist. They're not thinking in terms of what a black yeah, artist is. Yeah, but they've is. always wanted black women to be one thing, and that is, you know, sort of, it's sexy how many, you know, sort of, what, what you're showing and all the rest of it. That's been that way all along the line for all of us. They all want to see the tigress in us and all that kind of crap, yeah? Yes, but... So I'm... as soon as you start veering away from that, and you have the temerity, I suppose, to call yourself an artist like Billie Holiday is, mm -hmm. or d did, mm -hmm. then, I mean, you, you, you just go down the pan and you end up how she did. And, I mean, you said that Ella Fitzgerald never compromised, but I would say that Ella Fitzgerald did compromise. She's an exemplary artist. There is absolutely no doubt mm -hmm. about that. Mm -hmm. But she did compromise. She played all those maids and things like that in the Hollywood films. Ella Fitzgerald? Along, well, you know those kind of, no, I mean, you're that about kind Pearl of... Bailey. Okay, Pearl Bailey then, well, whatever, Ella it doesn't Fitzgerald matter. Never but I mean, that. a person like she Billie did? Holiday no, did not, no. did not play Neither that kind of thing. Neither would play those kind of parts. Neither would I play those kind of parts. So we never compromised to the extent that we prostituted ourselves. This was. I'm not talking. This I mean, that, is one that, of that, our that's problems. That's going over the top. But I mean, would no, you agree not... with me that there is this stereotype of how white people like to see black women in the entertainment industry? Yes. Well, maybe that's why on the television series you only see uh, fat black women. Yeah, right. Rather than a beautiful girl like you, for instance, being That's the lead in the television series. Things. But it's true. <laughs> <laughs> and we've all had the same problem, particularly if you're a mulatta and you happen to be with a small core body and all of that sort of thing. It's a, it's a threat, it seems, to the American whatever. Blah, blah, blah. Maybe not so much today as it was in the beginning uh, when I started in the business. But those of us like the Lena Horns and like the Ella Fitzgeralds who refuse to play subservient parts, we stuck to our guns. Mm -hmm. We were the ones who were called difficult because we wouldn't compromise. Yeah. Whereby, you see what the television shows that we get over here. They think all black people, I mean, those who do not know what we look like, for instance, they think all black people look like, uh, um, what's her name, who used to play in Gone with the Wind. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hattie McDaniel. Or Hattie McDaniel, or like Butterfly McQueen. I don't know nothing about no bone and no babies. <laughs> 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 it was very recent, but what is his name? I think it's Spielberg or somebody like this. They gave me a script, and I think it was to do with... Um, <laughs> <laughs> get a gossip <laughs> <bird>. get <laughs> a gossip <laughs> They gave bird. me this script that had to do with cat people, you know, and they thought, oh, God, Earth the kid cat girl woman she's got to be in this film <laughs> so when I read the script it was something like nah honey child you know what you got to do baby and I was reading the script exactly the way I talk and the director looked at me and said what I was laughing and he said what's the matter don't you like the script I was laughing well and said well I think it could be written a little bit I didn't get the parts into it that's what I say the artiste never gets paid because as you were saying Pauline they always want us to be what they think in terms of what black people should be presented as all over the world. I had a situation, I was in, I was in Sweden, and there was an advertise. I was doing an Eartha Kitt tour, and there was an advertisement in the newspaper, Eartha Kitt looking for a chauffeur, you know, to drive her all over the country. Well, here comes this handsome, beautiful guy. My God, he almost fell apart when I saw his face. He was auditioning for, I don't know how you auditioned to be a chauffeur, but that's <laughs> <laughs> That's think of a way. <laughs> so, anyway, he had no idea what I looked like. And he looked at me and said, you're beautiful. And I said, what's wrong with that? He said, well, it said in the papers, it said, 
black American singer. I said, so? And he said, I thought you were going to be black and fat. Oh, my God. Nah, 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 nah. I fooled you, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> but that's what he had seen in all of the American movies. So he had no idea what a black American woman mm -hmm. looks like. So this is what you're talking so about. So they also don't all look like you. I mean, which is amazing.